Good morning, everyone. It's Penelope, and we're going to talk about money. Oh, my. Money is one of those subjects where spouses fight, um, and people get kind of frustrated when people try to tell other people how to save money. And there's one person at work, and you know who you are if you've watched this, um, that kind of always says to me, well, you can save money because you don't pay rent. Okay, well, I am a homeowner, and I do have expenses as a homeowner. And this is what I came up with, just some specifics, okay? And I'm going to read them off to you, just because. Property tax, $1,000. Homeowner's insurance, $1,300. Front porch repair, $1,800. And I had to get it done, or it was going to cause my house to break, and probably bust the windows out of my front porch. I had to buy a water heater, $800. Furnace repair, $200. Those incidentals came up to $5,100. $5,100. And I divided it by 12, and that's $425 a month. Okay? So, yes, as a homeowner, there is accountability and bills going out that may not be a monthly rent, but $5,100 for just those specifics. There are other things, like this year, got lots of things that I have to repair on this house this year. Owning a house is not like renting. You are responsible for homeowner's insurance, property tax, um, any kind of repair, replacements, so on and so forth. So, I don't ever want to hear that out of your mouth again when we're discussing money. Thank you. Okay, so what I want to talk about is saving money and some of the places where you can actually save a lot of money. And the first thing is, is your grocery bill and your purchases. Those are the things that you can control. Fast food, no. Starbucks drinks, no. When you have children, and I was asked by someone at work, well, can you budget $25 a week for two kids and two adults and I'm like yeah I can but I can do it but I don't know if you can do it because you have to give up prepackaged foods you have to give up convenience foods and you have to look at the sales and deals that are available for that week seven days all you're budgeting for is seven days now with children you have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, okay? Now, children like to say, well, but I don't like that. Okay, well, number one, children shouldn't be involved in financial decisions. And groceries and purchases are a financial decision. Input, likes, and dislikes should be taken into account. But children should not be making financial decisions for a household. No. But there are some things that you can purchase one week that you may not have to purchase the next. And then there are those things that you're going to have to sit down and prepare and plan to make it work. Now, breakfast. Breakfast is one of those meals where if you have children, you know, you want to start them off with a good day. Um, oatmeal. Get back to basics. Oatmeal. Hot cereals. Scrambled eggs or a fried egg with a piece of toast and maybe a piece of fruit, some orange juice. Make it balanced, keep it good. Um, homemade muffins. You know, you can buy muffins already made and they're like ungodly. Making a little batter and putting it in the oven and popping the muffins out and you can freeze them. So if you decide to take a day and just make nothing but breakfast muffins, freeze them pancakes is probably the cheapest thing you can make pancakes and they do freeze well and with pancakes you can add fruits you can put peanut butter on them peanut butter with honey or peanut butter with syrup such a great thing breakfast burritos I mean come on some scrambled egg a little bit of sausage or bacon in there some cheese a little bit of salsa roll it up freeze them in a bag, they can get in the bag, 
throw it in the microwave and they have a breakfast burrito. That's a great, a great idea. Smoothies. If you have a kid that loves um, fruit drinks, do smoothies. Save some vegetables and fruit, throw them in the blender, or if you have the Ninja Bullet, do that and hand them that with a granola bar and they are set to go because that's a very healthy breakfast. Now you could do one, two, three, four, five, six. There's six ideas right there for six breakfasts. And that's pretty cheap. Lunches. Okay. If your kids aren't eating lunches at school, there are things that we need to do, and that's getting back down to the basics or trying out new things. Peanut butter and jelly. There is nothing wrong with taking a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to work or to school or work. There's nothing wrong with it. I take a peanut butter and jelly sandwich at least once a week. Lunch meat and cheese. You can find cheaper lunch meats and sliced cheese. You can put it in wraps and make it fancy for them. Um, put them in the little flour wraps or the flat breads and roll them up. You could even cut them into little little pinwheels and, and put them in their lunch like that. That would be fun. And I bet they'd be a hit at school. Um, oh, and decide, like, what will you put on the sides? Like homemade cookies. Make a dozen homemade cookies and every day put one or two in their lunch bag. Um, leftovers. I eat leftovers for lunch. Um, something else. Now, the pre-packaged little fruit cups and the pre-packaged little apple sauces are convenient for lunches. But if you get the right little containers, you can put those in there. You can freeze them the night before, put them in their lunch buckets or bags or whatever, and by the time lunch comes around, they're thawed out enough and they have a really nice side dish like fruit or applesauce. Buy it in bulk. Okay, so the dinner meal. The dinner meal is probably the most important meal to purchase for the seven days. Okay, now potatoes are fairly cheap. You can get 10 pound bags for like sometimes $1.99, two bucks, or even cheaper if you look around for the right price. And it's something you don't have to buy every week. Bags of onions, something you're not going to have to buy every week. So, with that being said, pasta meals are extremely economical. Whether you do spaghetti or you do some sort of uh, goulash, something like that, something your kids may like a little better, you throw a little meat in there, some vegetables in there, and you've got a complete meal. Um, one pot meals like a big piece of meat with vegetables and maybe some noodles or however, whatever you cook, pot roast or chicken. Um, you can make one pot meals, chicken and dumplings. There's, that's great because you can use the mixed vegetables and put your biscuit stuff on top and cook it in your, your, um, your pot and those biscuits will turn into dumplings. Oh my gosh, that's a great one. Um, casseroles casseroles are great money savers and I believe that casseroles got really really popular when women started going to work and they would come home and throw a bunch of stuff together put it in the oven and they had a complete meal right there in their casserole dish so casseroles are absolutely fantastic money savers um, stir fries stir fries can be healthy um, and quick and not only that but very cheap to make you don't need as much meat you need some vegetables, and then you throw some rice on the side, and it's a complete meal. Meatloaf. Meatloaf is fantastic. If you can get your kids to eat meatloaf and mashed potatoes and a vegetable, you also have meatloaf for meatloaf sandwiches. If they like it that well, maybe they'll eat it for lunch. Maybe you'll eat it for lunch. Soup and grilled cheese sandwiches are simple, simple things. Get some vegetable soup. Even if you let your kids pick a can of soup when it's really, really cheap, then make a grilled cheese sandwich and they have just made a decision. But I think the, the biggest thing that I see with families is they allow their children to dictate the financial decisions of a household. And grocery purchases are a financial decision. You are making a decision to buy prepackaged food. You are making a decision to not go back to the basics of food. Now, some ideas for snacks, um, popcorn, you know, 
some people have gotten used to doing the microwave popcorn. You buy in the bag of popcorn and you throw it in the microwave. Those things are expensive and you don't get as much. If you buy popcorn and oil, I'm telling you, it is the most amazing thing to pop your own popcorn, not out of the microwave. And you can also throw a little bag of that the next day for their lunch. Um, but my mother made popcorn. I make popcorn. Love it. Homemade potato chips. If you're getting a whole 10 pound bag of potatoes for two bucks, make some homemade potato chips, potato wedges, french fries. That, that, that's great. Just look on how to do it. Pizza bites. You can make pizza bites out of little bagels. You can make pizza bites out of English muffins or even canned biscuits. Say there's a really good sale on canned biscuits. You make them really, really flat, put your sauce, your cheese, and you can always find pepperoni cheap, especially at the dollar store. I think they have dollar packs of pepperoni that's shelf stable. Keep that on hand. Quesadillas. Quesadillas are fun. You have some flour tortillas, throw some cheese, and whatever you have in there, put the other one on top and bake it. You've got a quesadilla. That's a great, great thing as a snack. Okay, drinks powder drinks, Kool-Aids, Tang, um, lemonade, those are great. Iced tea, have we forgotten about iced tea? That's all we had as a kid. We can drink pop very often. Something else I recommend is when you buy a jug of juice, split it in half with water. Split it in half with water. We are living in an age where people buy bottled water with a little bit of flavor in it and they're fine with it. There's nothing wrong with having a half juice water blend to drink when you're at home. That's what we do to save money. But it's not just to save money, but it's to cut that that juice, that concentration. Okay. So things that you know we've kind of covered here. You can freezer prep little sandwiches, wraps, breakfast burritos, pancakes, muffins, all kinds of stuff you can put into your freezer for pop-outs, really quick little meals and snacks. Now you'll notice that after that seven days you'll have some of this stuff left and you're like, cool. So that's going to work in its way into the next week. Okay. Now I'm going to show you what I do and this is how I do it. $60. See that? $60. I do 20 for fuel, 25 for food, and 15 for miscellaneous. That $15 miscellaneous allows me a little bit more if I need a little more for fuel or a little more for a grocery or say my dog needs something. Or as a smoker, I need my tobacco and tubes because I don't buy cigarette packs. Uh, no. Are you kidding me? If I buy that, I'm. it messes up my whole week. <laughs> okay. Now, I was going to show you how I do my checkbook, but I think I'm going to check that out for another thing. But there is one thing that I do recommend, and that's getting that $1,000 emergency account. Every time you can save money, sock it into a savings account that you never, ever touch. And when you get it to $1,000, it is for an emergency only. Something happens, you need $1,000, or say things get really really tough and you need it it's an absolute emergency i've had my er account for a couple years a few years now and i've never ever touched it so just an idea but i want to show you some of the foods that i got this week that were super super cheap um and i and i've done some ideas with it i found and there's some gone out of here because i've been making my sandwiches i found mini bagels for 99 cents. Now, there are a lot of these in here and I don't have to use them all. I could freeze them all or if I had a family to feed with kids especially, I would make some breakfast bagels. I would probably make some pizza bagels and put them in the freezer so that way the kids would have quick lunches, breakfast, and um, a snack. So, 99 cents, I got a whole bag of bagels. Okay, now last week, I bought my my loaf of bread for 89 cents and we're still eating on it okay but this week I found my bread a whole thing for 59 cents now 
I could have threw this one in the freezer, but I already have some in the freezer, so I figured this would be the sweets. Okay, I also found hamburger buns for 49 cents. Now, and the reason I didn't put these in the freezer yet is because we are going to have a few hamburgers um, at the end of this week going into my next week. So, if you find bread like this, or these kind of bread things, and say you find two, throw one in the freezer. Um, say I wasn't going to have hamburgers on this menu list, I would put them in the freezer and then pop them out in the times that we are going to have. And even if they, you don't use them all, you paid 49 cents for it. Because we're going to have meatloaf sandwiches, we're going to have hamburgers sometime within going into the weekend with the leftover ground beef that I have in there. Um, so bread is something, you know, that you really have to watch. Now, I found a pineapple for 99 cents. A can of pineapple is what, a dollar? Okay, I have fresh pineapple for 99 cents. This week, the cantaloupe was 99 cents. So, and then of course, bananas are fluctuate between 49 cents and 59 cents a pound. Um, so a little over a pound is three bananas, but you know, you make concessions. How many bananas are you going to need? What are you going to do with them? And if you do have bananas that get older, freeze them or make your banana muffins for breakfast. It's just an idea. Maybe some pancakes with the bananas. Smoothies. Don't let stuff go bad. You all have a great day and save that money. Bye y'all.